Okay guys, welcome back to a new video. So this one will be like a short summary video about repairing a damaged motherboard in an oven. So I didn't film like every part of this whole procedure because I didn't expect this whole thing to even work. But it did, so I will try to wrap it up so that you will understand. But anyway, so earlier today I wanted to run this ASRock Z77 OC formula after like a good amount of time. I had it, it had been sitting in a closet for many, th many months, so I hadn't run it in like a relatively long time. And uh, I wanted to do some CPU testing with the board. So when I placed the motherboard on a test bench, installed CPU, memory, graphics card, and all the power connectors like normally, then uh, this happened. So like absolutely no reaction to the power on button on the bufferboard's PCB at all. Like literally nothing, like no life whatsoever. And I even tried to uh, short the front panel power button connectors together like this with a metal object, but just it, like it didn't really change anything. I have seen it one time before that the power on button itself goes bad on a motherboard. So uh, I just wanted to double check that. So I tested with different CPU, different memory, and uh, I even measured the resistance of the V-core over here to just see that is anything like in short circuit on the motherboard itself. But there was like nothing like suspicious about the board, no visual damage or anything. So I just didn't know what to do. But first I took the motherboard outside I like completely cleaned it with my air compressor so there was absolutely no dust remaining that could cause a short but it didn't change anything it was still same after uh, uh, cleaning with the air compressor so like one thing like the last thing I could try was to put the motherboard in an oven I'm sure you have read and heard about the whole topic about like baking graphics cards in an oven to reflow the card itself so at around like 200 degrees celsius but with the motherboard i wanted to be more cautious about the whole thing so so the first thing i did uh, so i removed all the heat sinks from the motherboard so i, I removed the uh, chipset heat sink the vrm heat sinks from both sides of both up from both sides of the motherboard so i removed the big heat sink over here then i also removed this small heat sink from the back side of the board and I even removed the CPU from the socket as well as the whole retention bracket mechanism. So it was just like bare CPU socket. Uh, and you must remove the BIOS battery if you put a motherboard in an oven. And I also removed these small uh, jumper caps, so the CMOS clear jumper cap and the BIOS selection jumper cap because they are plastic. I wanted to make sure that nothing would melt in so high temperature. And once it was just like bare motherboard PCB, I preheated the oven up to 120 degrees Celsius. So that's not very warm, so that is not high enough temperature to uh, melt any solder joint on the motherboard. But uh, I wanted to try the temperature first before going any warmer, because 120 degrees Celsius is relatively safe temperature for any like normal computer component that shouldn't damage anything uh, when the component itself is not running. I placed the motherboard on top of these uh, uh, aluminium foil balls so I placed one ball underneath like each of the motherboard, uh, motherboard's corners and so that there was like easier access for the warm air I mean throughout the motherboard so that the so that the hot air could like access even the backside of the board so it was like standing in or levitating in the air and uh, yeah once the once the oven had hit the target temperature i placed the motherboard inside the oven and i let it sit there for 10 to 15 minutes around 12 minutes or so like close to 15 minutes and uh, after that time had passed i turned off the oven i opened up the front door and I let the motherboard to cool down by the ambient room temperature so just slowly by I mean on its own and once it had cooled down I came back upstairs I, I reinstalled 
the CPU retention bracket, and there's that Sandy Bridge Celeron G470 in the socket right now. One stick of G Skill Pi memory, then just the 24 pin plus the CPU power connector, so 8 plus 4 pin, no graphics card installed, no peripherals installed, uh, CMOS uh, BIOS battery is back in, uh, back in place, and let's see what happens. So let's turn on the power supply and look at this 4F B299. So it did post. So that's pretty awesome. Of course, it's impossible to say that how long will this last. It might last a day, a week, a month, or even a year, and then it could happen again. So uh, you might find it working for like even in normal use, and then suddenly the next day it, it's in that same state once again. So no reaction to the power button anymore. Then you have to try it in the over well, like again, and there's no guarantee that it will work again. So uh, it's like hard to say if this is like a permanent solution, but well. If the board is already in a broken state and you have no use for the board or the other option is to just throw it in the trash bin, you may consider trying this because if the board still has some value to you, if it's a good like motherboard for older generation, you may want to keep it. So it's not like throwing it throwing it in the trash bin is not your like ideal solution, then you might want to try this option. But definitely try that easier temperature first before going any warmer. So try like 10 to 15 minutes at around like 120 to 150 degrees Celsius. If that doesn't work, then you can try like warmer temperature to uh, melt any possible solder joints. So you have to set the temperature to like 200 or 210 to 220 to uh, melt any solder joints. But uh, if if it goes like what if it goes like uh, what how it happened over here then 120 degrees celsius should be warm enough but again there's like no guarantee that it will work or how long it will work but it was awesome to see it happen so uh, this is one of the best this is one of the best buffer boards for ivy bridge generation so i definitely want to keep it i still have some use for it so i wanted to try this before buying a new one but yeah so Remove all the heat sinks, CMOS clear, or, I mean BIOS battery if you do this, and uh, then just test with a bad CPU like this. You can do like a post test without any heat sinks or a cooler on the CPU for like a few seconds, like over here. But yeah, so if you have any like uh, own experience about this whole uh, process, maybe with graphics cards, memory, a motherboard, then Maybe share your experiences down below, or if you have some questions, then please drop them down below. But other than that, thank you for watching this short uh, summary video, and I will see you on the next one.